start? Will it even go? Super ghetto solution to that problem. Whew. We made a mistake. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Kristen, and this is Matt. We've spent the last four years sailing our $5,000 Craigslist boat to some of the most beautiful places in the Caribbean. From spearfishing in South Andros, Bahamas, staying in a treehouse and riding horses through the rainforest of the Dominican Republic, to even dodging hurricanes in Puerto Rico. We could have never imagined what this adventure would become. After gaining more sailing experience, we knew we had to make some serious upgrades to our boat if we wanted to keep this journey going. So we decided to go all in with our 40 year old boat and get a new engine. We soon realized that we were in for more projects than we originally planned on. There's going to be some major changes coming up, so hit subscribe and join us for the journey. What's up guys, welcome back to Sailing GBU. Right now we are in our Airbnb and we got some missions to do. If you haven't been watching our videos in a while, we got our engine and it's been a whole process. Ordering it, you got it, you waited for it to get shipped, it finally arrived. Now we've gotten it into the boat and then we got it mounted pretty much, right? And lined up with the shaft aligned. And now there's only a few more things left to do. So we gotta go out and we gotta gather the parts that we need left. Yeah, we need multiple parts to finish this install. Things that filter the gasoline, that pump it, that pump the water in, filter the raw water, the gasoline muffler, or gasoline muffler, the engine's muffler, exhaust system. There's some little things we gotta get to put together and we gotta go get them today. I'm not gonna put the old stuff on the brand new engine. I'm gonna go new front to back. And a lot of y'all were f upset about the prop last week. Say that was, I, it's going to be a couple of weeks by the time they see it. Okay, my bad. <laughs> y'all were upset about the prop at some point, and uh, I should have cleaned it off, so I might get a new prop also. But anyway. No, we already planned on getting a new prop. That was pretty much trash, but we needed a prop on there because you didn't want to pull the shaft all the way through, and then you sink your boat. Heard that. So we just needed it on there as a doorstop. Heard. Yeah. So we got to go gather all these things, but we're super excited because we're this close to this thing turning on and blazing out. So let's get going. We gotta go get over to our scooters and get to the store. All right guys, we're out here and as you can see, there's a giant storm behind us. The roads are wet, so I'm a little nervous on my scooter, but you know what? It's not that far of a drive. So we're gonna get right on over to our area. Yeah, we are gonna go. And we got our headset so we can communicate. Let's get this trip going, y'all. We made it to our tried and true, the skipper shop. All right, so this is the Raycor, Parker Raycor. It's the fuel filter treatment thing. It takes debris, any debris or any other fluids that might be in the tank and helps filter them out. I know we we're supposed to be looking stuff for the engine, but instead I found this really cool cup holder that slides down. You can put this in the cockpit and then you open this part up and then you can adjust it for your cup. Should I get it? Seven dollars. Let me know. I think that's definitely getting got, but not today, later. All right, so what we're getting here is the Groco sea strainer. Basically what this does is it filters the octopuses that want to swim up my coolant hose and raw water hose and live in there just like octopuses, shrimps, fish. This is like an underwater sea tank pretty much. All right guys, so you might have seen this before. Well, we've been seeing AG1 by Athletic Greens going around the internet for a while now, and we really wanted to give it a try. 
We've been drinking AG1 for a little over a month now, and here's what we've noticed. If you guys saw last week's episode, you saw us go on this crazy five mile kayak trek up current against the wind. And as many of you know, I'm in here in this crazy Puerto Rican heat working every day on my boat to try to get this thing finished. And that takes a ton of energy. Luckily, AG1 helps me keep my endurance up because it's packed with great things like vitamin B12 and wheatgrass. Kristen likes to drink hers first thing in the morning and it's been really convenient for me to just grab a travel pack and head out to the boat instead of making coffee. And I know a lot of you guys are thinking the same thing that I was thinking. This is a nutritional drink. What does it taste like? And I had my apprehensions, but I was pleasantly surprised. To be honest, it has kind of like a fruity flavor. Kristen didn't really agree with me on this one, but I said it tastes a little bit like bubble gum. I don't know, maybe that's just me and I'm weird. So besides what we personally love about it, it has a lot of other benefits, such as gut health, brain health, and supports immunity. So click my link to get a one year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five travel packs for free with your first purchase. And if you guys do give it a try, please let me know, hit me up on the gram, DM me, instant message me, cause I wanna hear about your experience with it. I've been loving it and I'd really like to hear if you guys are loving it too. So we are back on the boat and now it's time to get into that engine and do some other fun things. But can you check out something guys? Do you see anything different around here? I'll give you a few seconds. It's our windows. It's so much brighter in here. Matt put our new windows on and they look so good. It's unbelievable. When I first came in the boat, I thought they were just popped out. That's how bright and beautiful they look. Hopefully it doesn't bring a ton of heat in here because they are slightly tinted, but they are a little less tinted than our old ones. But they're so clear and so beautiful that this boat's just coming out so good that I can't even believe yeah, it. Yeah, it's weird to be able to look outside on this boat and actually see what's out there instead of having to just see through a million plexiglass cracks. But yeah, we're hyped. She cussed me out and said, where's all the windows? And I said, the windows are in there, honey. And she said, oh, wow, so beautiful. Oh, they look so ooh, good. Ah, ooh, daddy, ooh, daddy. <laughs> but yeah, anyway. We're getting back, enough of that nonsense. We're getting back, we're getting to work on that engine because I don't know if y'all can see it, but Lord have mercy, Matt, he's got his blue jeans on. They probably can't see it down there. And oh. they probably don't need to see that. I got there. my Daisy Dukes <laughs> on, which means I'm about to duke it out with that engine. So I got my parts, but first things first, I got my old parts I gotta tend to as well. And I gotta make a ratchet fuel gauge. A lot of people got the gauge that tells you empty, full, middle, whatever. I ain't got that. So I'm gonna have to show you my super ghetto solution <laughs> to that problem. All right, so here's my old trusty dusty 14 gallon tank that I got from Sailor Man in Fort Lauderdale. Really cool store if you never had a chance to go there. But yeah, basically we're the realest of the real. We don't carry 70 gallons of diesel. We don't have a bunch of jerry cans strapped to the side of the boat because yeah, am I bragging? I'm bragging. We go hard. We only want a little bit of diesel just for in and out. It's little, little spots. So we still want to sail. So what I'm going to do, this is 14 gallons. I'm going to make 14 equally spread apart marks on this. And that's going to give me a more or less way to estimate how much fuel I'm using and how much fuel I have left. Okay, so from top to bottom, we got 14 and a quarter. I'm gonna say this bad boy is an eighth of an inch thick every which way. So I'm gonna go up an eighth of an inch and then I'm gonna start every inch gets a mark. So that should, every inch represents a gallon. That's my arts and crafts for today. All right, guys. Oddly enough, it is two weeks later from that last clip that you saw. We basically were about to get into getting our engine installed and we started seeing things weren't working out to what we were seeing in the manual. So we gave old Beta Marine a phone call and what happened, Matt? We jingle jangled up old uh, Beta Marine and said, look, they're this what i'm getting here is not really matching up with the uh manual and he was like well that's an ideal situation the manual obviously with a boat your age um there's going to be some differences because on this boat the engine sets completely underwater um there's nothing i can do about it because the, the water line not the, underwater yeah well the water line so 
in some boats the, it's it's above halfway so for the venting and the, the mufflers and the, there's a lot of things that that go a different way with mine being completely under the water line um those margins are smaller so i have to make it perfect and i was questioning some things so he went in and helped me out he sent me a different uh a higher rise muffler the highest one they make so that'll give me three to four more exhaust yeah the mixer elbow um and then that's gonna help um that's gonna give me a little more clearance from the water line and then i'm also going to install a vented loop just because i have to and then what else was there oh yeah the muffler the wet the wet muffler wet exhaust um at the bottom mine wasn't right it was the wrong size and so we had to wait for a new one for that so basically we just waited on the parts now all the parts are here so we're ready to back in action and let's hope we don't have that problem again so what you see here is the six inch high rise elbow that's actually a custom part already because Every Beta Marine doesn't come with that. I knew I would have this problem with the water line and clearance, so we went ahead and ordered that. That's an upgrade. And when I was putting things in, it just didn't really quite look right. So my water line is right to here, so it just didn't really fit. It wasn't going to work, and I was kind of concerned about backflow. So I called customer support at Beta Marine. They were awesome. They said, you know what? Yeah, I sent some pictures, and they said, yeah, you probably should go with the 8-inch, um, and it's going to give you more clearance and a better angle into the wet exhaust, which is going to help you out a lot. So this here is what I have, the 8-inch, and they were awesome. They shipped it straight out, got here fast. They even gave us a return shipper, so we just got to put the old one back in the box, and we'll be putting that back to them. But we got this now, and I'm stoked about it. I think it's going to help a ton, but first I got to get the old one off and get the new one on. This is a new one that we have basically what this is is a wet exhaust it's basically just a bucket with an in and an out in it so that if you're let's say you're riding your boat and following seas the mufflers at the back of the boat water could get pushed into the muffler and over time get fuller and fuller and get pushed in and pushed in and pushed in and pushed back into the uh, exhaust of an engine it's like when you see those trucks that have the exhaust that goes all the way out that's because those trucks drive through water and you cannot get water into your engine or else it's obviously not going to work so the problem with this one is that these are one and a half inch uh, inlets. This is a two inch inlet. So what the uh, people at Beta Marine said, I was like, I'm just gonna use this one and put a tighter hose clamp on it. But they said, you really don't want to have the exhaust coming out of the engine and get bound up here. You don't wanna have a crimp on it. You wanna just flow through smoothly and the half inch really matters. Yeah, and the half inch really makes a big difference. You can see it's quite a bit. Plus you, as you can see with this, this and this are the same size, it's all gonna line up, but this one is much bigger than that one, so it wouldn't be ideal. I know a lot of you were saying, oh, that little half inch would make much difference because it's just pushing air through, but in a boat, it doesn't just push air through, it pushes water through as well, because raw water cools the engine as well as this mixer elbow, and it cools things down before they go back into there in the boat. That's why you see an inside hose and an outside hose here. The water comes out the outside and then they just the exhaust comes out on the inside. That half inch needed to be dealt with and now we're ready to go properly. I just had to build something to hold it up at the bottom here, some little brace stand. So I got to measure that out, get that ready to go and then just put a little hose from here to here and we're going to be ready to go with that. So we ran short of daylight yesterday while we were down in that hole fixing the muffler, but we got it sorted. It's looking good. I'm going to need like a little bit of adapter and a few fittings and hose clamps and stuff like that to completely finish it out. But I'm going to measure for all those at one time, make one trip hopefully, and come back with everything I need rather than trying to piecemeal it 
and just guess what I need. So now we're moving on to the next part, which is going to be my C strainer. Uh, I'm going to mount it pretty low here to the bottom. Should be pretty straightforward. Put that in there, and then I'll be able to measure how much hose I'll need to get to my fresh water in, or my excuse me, my raw water intake for the uh, coolant for the impeller. So that's what's going next. So next, I gotta put my diesel fuel filter water separator in. Basically what this does is in case anything crazy is in my fuel tank, it doesn't make it down the line into my engine. This does a great job of keeping that cleaned out. Water, anything crazy like that. If when I'm putting the diesel in on the outside, it's raining or I drop a bunch of sand out of my hair or something, my long dreadlocks that hold a lot of sand. So I'm gonna get that mounted next. I wanna mount it kind of like in line with the gas tank so that, or the fuel tank so that it doesn't have to really go up or down or be pulled too much. I kind of want to just let it flow evenly. So I think I can mount it back in the back. It'll be still easy to service and it'll work perfect. Another day, another dollar. I think it's been 500 bajillion days, but exciting we're getting there. And Matt has gone and picked up a whole bunch of tubing, different sizes for different things and measured it all out. And he's already started installing it this morning. So we have our muffler already set up with the tubing and he's done the C strainer. So now we just need to get into the fuel tank and get that started up. And then we have the vent loop. So we're almost there people. Then some liquids, what do you call them Matt? The, you, I call them the uh, engine fluids, but you call them the goos. The goos. So the engine goos come, and then we're going to be going dig a dig a dig dig dig! <laughs> So now it's time to put the vent loop in. This is basically because our engine is at the water line. We have to get a siphon, anti-siphon valve up above the water line so that if something crazy were to happen, water doesn't come back through and end up going toward the engine. It all just goes away from the engine. mirror on the wall who is the smartest most ingenious engine installer of them all not this guy that would be Kristen dot our dot it's me it's her so basically I was dreading this next part I was like oh I'm so stupid I should have put my battery leads on before I installed the engine because as you can see I can barely get in here and I was like I can't see anything I'm being a big dumb dumb trying to take pictures of my phone and like mental note it. and Kristen said hey 
we got a couple of those mirrors left. Why don't we just slide the mirrors under? And boy, she put it in there, and I think it's going to make this go much easier to get this battery hooked up. What time is it right now? 140 something. 140, so if the next three hours go good, boy, we might be cranking up. We might be trying to crank. All because of me, beauties and brains. All because beauty and brains over there with the camera said, hey, why don't you just stick some mirrors under there, you dippy do? And I said, so for all you old crotchety mofos out there that say she don't ever do nothing. She I'm the key. The I'm the key to success. Beneath my wings. <laughs>I get annihilated in the comments for cutting this perfectly good wrench. I needed a stubby. I needed a little one. You should always have a wrench the width of your hand for getting in little spots. And uh, this wrench was on its way out. I've used, had to use it underwater for certain things before and in the dinghy. So this is kind of a throwaway, a cheapie, but still I know that had to hurt some of y'all saying, oh good lord, what's that boy doing? He should have just got the gym jab, half toddler, 5,000, you know, but I didn't have all the tools. I just had this one and I got to make this work.
obviously I'm nervous. Um, I didn't want to take the time to talk to you guys just this second. And I was quickly reminded that, hey, boy, we're YouTubers first and we're DIY diesel mechanics second. So... She said, get over here and tell them, tell them. I emotions. really feel like I'm going to barf. Like, I don't, I don't, if I didn't have to film this, I would, like, close my eyes and probably would run down the dock and not look at it and hope Matt would tell me later. Well, when you used to get your head busted for a living, this is pretty light, light duty. All right, enough time, guys. Let's get into it. Let's do it. Aren't you excited? I'm going to crank, crank that soldier boy. I'm going <laughs> to... I can't believe that just happened, guys. Whew. We made a mistake. We didn't put our fuel filter back on. And all the oil started shooting out. So embarrassing. Whew. Thank God I had this pan down here, though. What a nightmare. I can't believe I got to put the freaking oil filter back on. <laughs> Matt, I said go do the checklist in your head. Ultimate idiot. I was so busy thinking about how I was going to tell but you. But it started, at least. Oh, it started right away. Yeah. Well, that was embarrassing, y'all. Actually, I'll be honest, I had a little bit too much oil in it, so that was actually on purpose. Yeah, I whatever. I wanted to drain a little oil off, Mom. Get out of here. We wanted to start it back up to show you guys, but all of our, pretty much we wasted all of our oil, almost a good amount where it's unsafe to start it back up. Yeah, well, by design, I did a complete oil flush, which I was always told to do whenever you start a new engine. Whatever, you just admit you're wrong. Clean oil. Yeah, I, I was definitely wrong. Talk about feeling like an absolute idiot. You're looking at the face <laughs> of one right now. To gather all those parts and to be terribly meticulous about eighth of an inches on things and getting it perfectly aligned and diving in and out of the water and shimming it up and just not joking around about the engine because I, I'm not an engineer by any means. So, and having those little bit of nerves, I thought that I had checked my her across my T's and dotted my I's, but basically what happened was Kristen was reading the manual and we had to go step by step and I wanted to fill the raw water first. Oh wait, you're blaming someone I, else again? No, listen, and I knew that it, that was not in the manual and that we were going to get to it and I was going to say, whoa, are we ready to go? And she was going to say, yeah. And I said, actually, we have to do the raw water. So I had that stupid. So that should be a lesson, you guys. When you want to get petty with your beautiful woman. You were trying to trick me. And you're just looking to bag on her a little bit. I forgot about my own stuff. So, you know, th think about that in life. When you're looking at what somebody else is doing wrong, you might not be looking at what, what your own self is doing wrong. So... Focus on yourself. I didn't do anything wrong. You didn't do it. No, you didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> well, we should have checked everything before we went. I should have. And the reason I took the I, the reason I took the filter off in the first place was because I couldn't get to the battery. So I had just I had just put the filter on the other day and like mentally checked that in my head. And then I took it off right before to, to get to the battery. So that's the reason I completely forgot. But anyways, it happened. But it's, <sighs> let, let's think of the positives. It started right up, y'all. And the thingy, the belt started going, and then. I'm guessing we didn't get to put it into gear quite yet, so... No. I was I was surprised. There was, like, no idle cranking at all. That thing literally... You said it's supposed to be under 10 seconds. Yeah, that thing... I was, like, in my head starting to count to 10, and I couldn't even start counting. Of yeah. course, it was uh, having the bad girl Riri's out the side. The <laughs> diarrhea was coming out the side of Clifford. But you know what? Every dog ain't housebroken right away when you get him. And Clifford had a little... <laughs> Out the side because he's got bad trainers. That was my fault, Clifford. I still love you. But either way, Clifford started barking rrr, 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 right out the gate. And Kristen was like, oh my God, what this all I said, I said, turn it off. Turn it off. And you know what? Even though either do one or two things in the comments. I know just don't take it easy on me, guys. Don't say, hey, Matt, will y'all make mistakes? Say, Matt, what an idiot. <laughs> You are no, don't do that. Yeah, because in fighting, that's what you want to hear. When you get knocked out, you want your boys to be like, dang, bro, you got you got knocked up out. That's awesome. That makes you feel better. When you go into the gym and everybody's like, oh, well, you'll, you'll get them next time. You know, it's like, nah, dog. Nah, you don't really love me. So if you really love me, tell me I'm a doofus <laughs> in the comments below. And then, uh, you know, But everything I'll else seems to be working out. If we, later this week, if we get some more oil and we run it, I'm going to lay over a bonus clip after this. If there's no bonus clip after this, that means we're still working. Yeah, we struggle because we, we, we struggle because we love y'all and we could not put you through an extra video. We could have broke this down into like a 10 part series <laughs> realistically and just, yeah. but we didn't want to drive you nuts. This is already like the fifth engine we've been doing. So I may later 
try to do like a more in depth. We're definitely gonna talk about our intern again. Yeah, we're gonna talk about the engine a lot. I don't even know what I'm tripping yeah, on, but I know yeah. What we, you're about so either. we're not gonna make another video and show the, the the engine in the next video. We're gonna try to get a layover clip and put it in this video because we still have days to edit this bad boy since we're fully live. He doesn't know what's going on. He's just overwhelmed right I'm now. I'm frazzled, dazzled. <laughs> So guys, make sure you subscribe. Let us know in the comments what you thought of our DIY. We did it all by ourselves. I said we could do it and it looks like we're doing it. Now is it 100%? No, we haven't put it into gear quite yet. But Ooh, Can we get red paint so that we can paint our Raycor to match? What? No. Come on. Guys, make sure you hit subscribe, like this video, jump on our Patreon, sign up if you guys want to see real time updates activities projects whatever's going on in our life and we'll see you guys in the next episode bye